Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to continue exploring the advanced features of link and the internals of those methods. In my last couple of videos, I have covered the implementation of where, select and select many. If you have not watched those videos, I would strongly encourage you to watch those. I'm going to provide the link up there so that you can watch those videos. Now in today's video, I'm going to cover another interesting feature of link which is join. Now join is another feature which is very helpful, especially dealing with multiple data set. So to do that, I'm going to take the example of the customer that I created in my last video. So the customer had a couple of attributes, the name and an array of phone. Now the customer doesn't have any address here, but the address in data structure can be in a different class altogether. And it might be, you know, kept separately in the database and we might have to join them together in memory. So let's consider that situation. For that, first let me declare a property ID in the customer. And it's going to be int. So let's say the customer has a customer ID. Now let me declare a new class address. And for the address class, let me first make it as public. Let's say it has few properties. So first one is its own ID. The second one is the ID of the customer for which the address is. So for that, we're going to say customer ID. Third one, let's say is the street. The fourth one is city. And similarly, we can have state and zip and other thing. But for this demo purpose, I'm just going to keep the number of properties as this three or four. Now, let me go back to the program. So in the last video, I already created a customer array, which had two customer objects inside it. One is for John and this for Jane. Now let's create an array of address, which will keep address of our customers. So let's say addresses equal to new. And inside the array, let's create a couple of address. Okay. So the first one, let's say ID is equal to one. Then customer ID is equal to two. Street is equal to. And city is equal to city one. Now we need the customer ID in the customer object also which is the ID attribute. And let's say ID of Jane is two and ID of John is one. Okay, so now here I created an address with ID one and it has a customer ID of two. Now let's create another address. And let's say for this address, the ID is equal to two. The customer ID is also two because Jane has a couple of addresses. Okay. And let's say this one is and the CD is CD2. Okay, I have to give a comma here. Okay, so I have this addresses array. Now let me get rid of this select many. And now let's say we want to join the customers with the addresses. So for that, I'm going to do join. And in the join, as you can see, it takes the inner enumerable, in our case is the addresses. And then it takes a func, which takes customer as an input. And the return to the func is going to be the key on which the join is going to happen. So for us, it's going to be customer dot ID. Let me get it to the new line so that it's visible. And then it takes another func, which takes the object of the inner array as the input and the key for that as output. So here, let's say this is address and the key that which on which we are going to join is the customer ID. So once I have that, the next thing you can see is another func, which is the result selector, which says what exactly the result we want. So here it's going to give both the customer and the address. And we can do here, we can do a new customer dot name and then address dot street and address dot city. So this is going to give the output object that we want. 
And instead of customer phone, let's say customer with address. And then finally, we're going to loop through customer with address. And here we're going to print, as you can see, it's already red squiggly showing up because this object doesn't have number or phone type. So here we're going to say name, then we're going to say street, and then let's say city. So once this is done, I'm just going to run this example. And once I run, I should see a customer Jane a couple of times with these addresses. So let me run. And as expected, same couple of times with the addresses. John is not showing up because there is no addresses for customer ID one. So that's why we are seeing this. So now let's try to implement this ourselves. So as we have seen here, there are multiple things in play. So if you can see the join has four types that it takes, right? One is the type of the outer array. The second one is the type of the inner array. The third one is the type of the key on which we are going to do the join. And fourth one and the final one is the type of the return. So these are the four types that we have to do in join. So now I'll go back to my class i enumerable extension and let's create a new class here. So let's start with public static and it's going to return a result of array result. So we'll start with t result and then we're going to name it as new join and this is going to take t as the first input and then it is going to take th as the second input this is t is the outer array th is the inner array let me fix this because we are creating generics so t is for the outer array, th is for the inner array. Then the third one is the t key one. And the fourth one is the t key two. And the last one is the t result, right? Okay. So we do that. Let's go back and see if we got the signature correct. So we have one, two, three, four. So we got one extra, we just need a key. We don't need two keys. Okay, so we have that. And then, of course, this is an extension method on the enumerable of t. So we will have this enumerable of t. And this is the items. And then we need the th, which is another enumerable. th, and this is the inner items. And then if you remember, we have a couple of funks to extract the keys on which the selection will happen. So we're going to start with func of first one, which will take T and return the key. And this will be the outer key selector. And then we'll have the one for inner key selector. So it will be th, then t key, and inner key selector. And the last one is again another func, which will take the outer object, the inner object, and then it will return the t result. And this is the result selector. So we are done with defining the function. Now let's provide the implementation. So for implementation, as we are dealing with couple of arrays and try to figure out the matches between them, obviously we would need two loops. So let's start with first loop. First one will be on the outer, so which is the items. And then we'll have another loop. And this is going to be inner item and inner items. And then we want to send a response only if the key matches, right? The key of the outer and key of the inner. So which means we'll do a if condition. And in if we'll say, okay, the outer key selector, pass the item to it, right? Equals the inner key selector, right? And here we are going to pass the inner item. If that matches, then we're going to do a yield return. 
but what exactly we are going to return right we are going to call this result selector to return the result so here we are going to call the result selector and result selector is going to take the item and then inner item and then it's going to return the result based on the delegate implementation from the outside. So as you can see in the other case when we had customer, this is in customer array. This is the addresses array and here all we are doing is if customer.id is equal to addresses dot I address dot id, right? This is how we do we have written a code if we want to do it without link. This is essentially the same thing. It's just that we are delegating the responsibility of figuring out the key and the result to the caller. So now that this method is done, let's go back and instead of join, let's use new join here. Okay, we don't see any compilation error. So at least our code structure and everything is working fine. Let me just quickly run this method and see what is the response we see. And if we run the method, we see the exact same result that we saw with the previous implementation or the out of box implementation of join, which is the customer join is coming showing up twice with couple of addresses. And now if I just put some debug point to go through the implementation, it'll be clearer how it all works. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and then I'm going to put a couple of breakpoint in the outer and inner for and let's run through it. So if we run as soon as it came here, let me stop this. Let me stop because I want to show that just like the where and select and select mini, the actual execution will happen only if we get into this loop, not before that. So let's start again. So we see that score is there. Let's step over. Now see nothing went inside this function. And if we see here, this still doesn't have any response or anything. See that everything is kind of no. So now if I do, uh, I can do a step over because I have a breakpoint internally. Yeah. Now it comes to the outer loop, which is the customers. And we can see here it's customer with two. Then it will come to the addresses, which is two, two of the addresses. And then in the first selector, the item is, you know, one and the inner item doesn't have any one. It'll have two as a customer ID. So it will be false. So it will go come for the second one that will also be false it'll go out and now it'll come to the outer loop and then it is coming back to the second item which is for the item now it's coming to chain with two and it will go to the same set of addresses again and this time the selector will pass because this will have a id of two and here the customer id is going to be two so now it will go inside and it will yield return so we'll go back here we'll print out the information then come back again. The selector will be executed again. The same yield return will happen. We'll print the output again and then it will come out of the loop. So this is all I wanted to cover today using the out of box join and then implementing the join ourselves. And as you can see, just like where select and select many, there is no magic here. It's pretty straightforward once you understand how to do it. And then using these techniques, we can create our own link methods. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to it. Thanks so much for watching this video.